Welcome to 100 Days in Slime Rancher 2, the game in which you capture, imprison, and exploit slimes for monetary gain. Speaking of monetary gain, please subscribe as 10k is right around the corner. Enjoy the video. On day one, I arrived on Rainbow Island and after imprisoning some slimes in a cage, I headed out to explore. I grabbed some pink slimes, carrots, and even came across some cotton slimes, which after filling my backpack, brought home and placed in a new corral. I fed them, then sold a bunch of plots before noticing a cave in the distance. Sadly, it was blocked off with a price tag of 1,800 new bucks, sure. So after appreciating the view, I set myself the goal to unlock that cave. But I didn't have any food, so I bought a garden, which I needed food to start, so I headed out once again to explore. I found some carrots and also a strange rope robotic bee, which told me lore. I didn't ask. But seeing as night was falling, I returned to my home, started a carrot farm, bought a plot collector for my corral, and headed to bed. The following morning, I admired the subtle glow effect before noticing my slimes were looking a bit hungry, so I set off on an adventure to gather some food. But I got instantly distracted when I found a ship, and when I got on, I slipped off into the water and awoke several hours later in my home. My slimes were looking incredibly hungry now, so I went out again looking for carrots. I grabbed a bunch before spotting a massive glowing slime in the cave, and and looking over it, I could see a really cool area behind. I presumed that I needed to feed it to get past, but I didn't have enough, so I left. On my way home, I came across some black slimes, which damaged me, so I ran away. At home, I fed my slimes a bunch and upgraded my corral before finding an underground area. There, I found a slime who hadn't paid rent, so I evicted it before checking out some cool upgrades I needed to get in the future. And when I emerged from my cave, it was morning. So I guess it's day three now. I started by feeding the Gordo some food and finding a strange object that I needed an upgrade to harvest before running into a cat, which I picked up. I returned to my home where I fed my slime, sold some plorts, and decided to feed my cotton slime a tabby slime plort, which made a really cool cross hybrid. After going on a short adventure, I returned and sold some more plorts before spending my funds on upgrading my farm. That night, I found a really strange slime that disappeared. I was very confused. But when I was feeding the Gordo the last of my food, it exploded, revealing a really cool area with a strange door on the other side. Not sure what to do, I returned home as the sun rose. When I I returned on day four, I fed my tabby slimes, then spent some money creating and upgrading a corral for my phosphor slimes. Now that I had two solid income sources, I decided not to spend any more money until I unlocked the cave. So I headed out in search of food and plots. I got a huge amount of food and money and was returning home when disaster struck. I jumped off the side of a cliff, losing everything in my inventory. I spent the rest of the day frantically searching for fruit and finally feeding my slimes by sunrise. I harvested and sold a bunch of plots the next morning before realizing that I had over 2,500 bucks. So I quickly set up a small fruit farm and headed over to the cave. After buying it, I discovered a whole new extension to my base, which was really nice. But I didn't really need it, so I did some epic parkour, talked to another bee, and once again fell off a cliff. I wasn't very pleased. I spent the rest of the day feeding my slimes before heading down to my basement, where I made the purchase of an upgrade for my gun thing, which could now pick up resources in the world. I tended to my slimes, then headed out into the world to pick up some random resources and feed a cotton slime gordo, which exploded, revealing a really cool little cave. I picked up a strange diamond, then activated a random orb, which made the whole screen shake, then nothing happened. A little confused, I left, deposited my resources, then decided what my next goal would be, to get a jetpack. But I needed radiant ore, which I didn't know how to get. I went outside looking for radiant ore when I came across a massive glowing pillar, and heading towards it, I was transported to a really cool area, and a spot that I could access if I had a jetpack. Oh well. I was then heading home when I attempted to make an epic jump, but failed miserably. So I guess it's day seven now. The first thing I did was feed my slimes, then decided since I had all this extra space to increase my farming power. I built up a silo for extra produce, then got another carrot farm going. I guess I'm going back to my stardew roots. I then headed out into the wild to get some chickens in case I got a meat-eating slime in the future. My run was overwhelmingly successful, so I returned home. There, I thought it was just about time to make my phosphor slime large, so I fed them some tabby plots, which they happily ate. I was looking at how many slimes I didn't have on day 8 when I decided to buy the den, because who knows, there might be slimes on the other side. Uh, there wasn't. So instead, I decided to head back to the TP pad where I found a whole new area that I hadn't explored yet. And heading inside, I was ecstatic when I found a rock slime. I picked it up and continuing onwards, I also ran into both honey slimes and angler slimes. I was stupidly excited, so I returned home thinking of the money that I would make. When I arrived home, I created three new corrals for my three slime variants. Then seeing that rock plot 
shorts sold for the most, I made everyone half rock slime. But I couldn't help but notice that my angler slimes didn't seem happy, so I instead built up a pond, which I initially thought would house them. It didn't. Seeing the huge amount of money I had just lost, I put my rock slimes in the pond and called it a day. Now I had a grind ahead of me. First, I almost fully upgraded my coop, then collected and sold my new plots, which I then used to upgrade both corrals. Returning back to my fabricator, I bought an energy upgrade, a health upgrade, and a backpack upgrade, which I would use the next day for my great adventure. Which turned out to be truly great, but you'll just have to take my word for it because I forgot to record. All that happened was I found some radiant ore in a cave, then returned home. So, to make up for it on day 12, after feeding my slimes, I headed off onto another great adventure. Soon enough, I came across a door that needed a honey plot to open, but my only honey slime turned into a tar right in front of me, so I set off to find another. On my adventures, I found a hunter plot, which was great, but when I eventually found some honey slimes, they were surrounded by angry rock slimes and tar, which kept spreading until I could turn around, and every single slime was a tar. It was genuinely terrifying. I managed to escape and finally got the door open. I was surprised as it looked very similar to the cave I found yesterday, but I was even more surprised when I realized it was literally the same cave. I returned slightly annoyed. I spent the entire first half of the next day selling all of my plots, and after I was done with that, I had a stupid amount of money. Deciding to spend it, I first built an incinerator, just curious of what it did. O okay. I then bought access to the third new addition to my base, which I would probably never use. Upon returning, I quadrupled my storage space and did some sorting before heading out with the goal of getting a new fruit for me to farm. I eventually found a mint mango, so I ran back to base and put it in my farm. I harvested it the next day, then fed my mangoes to my slimes. I was then looking at the plot stock market and realized everything was super down, so I decided to just put my plots in storage until the prices went up. I then headed off to get some rock slimes, as I needed to use my hunter plots to get some hunter slimes. On my way back, I encountered so many tar that when I arrived after setting up a home for my hunter slimes, I decided I wanted to invest in an upgrade to my backpack that allowed me to hold water and therefore take care of tar. Unfortunately, I didn't have any puddle plots, so I couldn't make one. But I still wanted it the next day, so I set out on a quest to secure a puddle slime. I quickly arrived at the beach area, and after searching for a while, all I could find were angler slimes. Although the run was worth it, as I found an area with more radiant ore. And after returning home, I realized I only needed two more until I could purchase a jetpack. I spent the rest of the day grabbing all my plots and storing them away, awaiting the day that they would regain value. The next morning, I was determined to get the remaining two radiant ore I needed to craft my jetpack. And after a quick search, I amazingly actually found some sprinted home and built it. With this, I could now access so many places, so I jumped over a small cliff and was introduced to a whole new area. I spent the entire day exploring and found a stupid amount of radiant ore. I even found a gordo and a huge portal which didn't do anything. A little disappointed, but guessing the gordo opened the portal, I headed home ready to get some food to feed it. The gordo that I wanted to open ate nectar and I had some in my inventory, so I built up a new farm plot and threw it inside. It didn't work. Slightly irritated, I decided that I should go back and organically grab 30 pieces of nectar. But on the way, I got distracted by another gordo, this time one that ate fruit. But I couldn't find 30 fruit just lying around, so I returned home and the next day ran back to the gordo with an inventory filled with fruit. But I realized it was blocked off by a door, so I fed it an angler plot and was granted entry into a massive cave filled with slimes. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the way to the gordo, so I left before realizing I could just fly up a bit. I fed the gordo until it exploded, which opened a whole new area with two spots for new plots to go in. I had no idea which slimes created these plots, so I flew outside and was attempting to exit when I forgot to charge my jetpack. I was feeding my slimes the following day when I realized the storages were full, so I spent some hours selling my plots. I had around 11,000 new bucks by the time I headed out with the goal of getting some plots to open the mysterious gates before. I made it to the Flutter Gordo and sure that the Flutter slimes that I needed the plots of would spawn there, I just waited. In fact, I waited all the way past midnight when I decided it wasn't worth my time and returned home. But I regained confidence the following day and returned to the area, this time finally coming across the Flutter slime that I had been waiting for. I then found a giant hole, so I definitely on purpose fell down right onto a gordo. I managed to escape and decide to go over to the flutter gordo, but I found some puddle slimes in the water. I was a little teeny bit excited, but I got even more hyped when I randomly threw a raccoon statue off a cliff, then noticed it had become a ringtail slime. Picking it up, I also found a ringtail gordo blocking a massive door, but I 
had no food, so I headed home instead. The next morning, after placing my puddle slimes in my pond, I decided to evict my tabby slimes and instead move in my new ones. Unfortunately, my ringtail slimes had turned into stones. Oh well. Since I needed to wait until they became normal again to breed them with my flutter slimes, I decided to head outside to grab some jelly stone, which back at base I used to upgrade my vac pack. I then spent some time breeding my slimes, excited about the money that they would provide. I collected my puddle plots on day 22, then noticed my ringtail slimes were all stone statues, which was genuinely terrifying. I thought that maybe a solar shield would help, and surprisingly it did, freeing my slimes. I then grabbed some puddle plots and returned to my fabricator, where I was finally able to craft my water upgrade for my vac tank. I was then attempting to suck water from a little pond in a cave when I got a little too cocky and fell right in. Good job me. The next day was primarily for making my base better for money making and improving my slimes diet. I had found something called favorite foods and after doing some research I made a short list of fruit and vegetables that I needed to grow. I then cleared the farms that grew useless items then replaced them with the loved foods. I also threw out the old foods creating the carrot pile, the pogo pile and the chicken pile. Food waste is bad unless it's me doing it. But the next day the pogo pile was still there so I grabbed it and decided to give it out to the wild slimes. I went over to the portal, went through and was running around randomly when I found a door that I needed a hunter plot to enter. So I returned to my base, grabbed one, ran all the way back and opened the door. It went straight back to the place I just was. That was a waste of time. I remembered on day 25 about the two gordos that I still hadn't opened. So I grabbed a bunch of chickens and headed over to the portal. When I got to the hunter gordo, I fed it 30 chickens and it just stood there. Confused, I went off and came back with a couple more chickens, but it still didn't budge. I would go get chickens, come back, feed it, and repeat for the entire day until it finally popped, giving me access to a brand new cave. Inside, there were cool pillars and a diamond, and I was left pondering whether it was worth it. I wanted to pop the other Gordo on day 26, so I grabbed 40 beats and headed over. Sure, it would be enough. I eventually arrived, but was greeted by a stone statue, realizing that I had to wait until night for it to be interactable. So I just flew around pointlessly until evening. I ran up to the big raccoon and fed it everything in my inventory. It didn't even start shaking. I ran around a little, giving it random bits of food, but eventually opted to head home and gather food there. I left my base again the following night with three entire inventory slots filled with food. Vegetables, fruit, and meat. I eventually made it and was ready to use all of my resources. That's fine. I'm not angry. <laughs> the Gordo uncovered a new portal, surely to a new awesome area with new slimes and unique items. It just brought me back to the main island. <laughs> That's fine. I'm not a- <laughs> Day 28 was chicken day. It started when I noticed some serious frame drops in my base and also noticed the hundreds of chickens just wandering around. I connected the dots and decided to do something about this poultry infestation. I first fully maxed two coops in the other area before spending the day running around my base, sucking them up and depositing them into the coops. <laughs> there are too many chickens. I grabbed and sold a bunch of plots in the morning of day 30. Yep, day 30. I definitely remembered to record day 29. I then decided to decorate my base a little bit, so I went down to the fabricator to see what I needed. I chose the tree thing, which I needed deep brine for, so I headed out, got some, and crafted it. Placing it outside my corrals, it looked very nice. Mm, that that's a tree. <laughs> I decided that I'd been waiting around for far too long. Today was the day I would get rid of the Flutter Gordo, so I headed over and on arrival, did some searching for nectar, but didn't find a single piece in the entire day. And the next day, and the next, and the next, and the next, 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 and Finally, on day 40, I was stood in front of the giant Gordo with more than 30 moon dew nectar in my inventory. I started feeding it and it ate six. <laughs> I'm not angry. The Gordo uncovered a massive cave, which amazingly had a brand new fruit, the pomegranate. I also lowered the pillars I had found a while ago. Incredibly happy with the progress I had made, I left. I fed my slimes on day 41, then since my inventory still had some random things in it and my other storage was full, I bought a new addition to my farm and headed there. When I arrived, I built up a maxed storage and put my things away before deciding to climb a mountain. I got to the very top and seeing an island in the distance, I flew over before realizing that I was fully stranded. I tried my best to make it over, but I inevitably failed. Heading down to the lab the following morning, I found that to craft a jump pad, I basically only needed wild honey. So I headed over to the other island and 
started searching the trees. I got some, but then only ever found beeswax hives, which was really frustrating. But the next day, I had more luck, and before long, I had spotted the honey that I needed. So I precautiously flew over and collected it. Heading home, I placed them in my fabricator, went out and got some cotton plots, deposited them, and finally crafted a jump pad. Placing it down, I hopped on. <laughs> it was terribly underwhelming. Oh well. But the next day, I had my sights on a new item, the Starlight Strand Portal. And seeing as I only needed some plots, I quickly grabbed them and crafted it. Placing it down, it teleported me straight to the Starlight Strand. And upon returning, it was still there. This one was actually worth the resources? <laughs> I was then looking at my map when I realized there was still an entire third of the map I still hadn't explored. So I headed over, found a Gordo and also a Switch, which when I clicked opened a gigantic portal in the distance. And on day 45, I grabbed some food for the Gordo and headed over, definitely didn't pass out, grabbed some more food and fed the Gordo. He exploded, revealing a water stream that shot me upwards. Okay, I have a jetpack. I then decided it was finally time to enter the portal. On the other side was a huge new area, which after a little exploring looked like a lava and fire themed place, where upon breaking apart, I got my very first new slime in a while, a batty slime. I then saw a bunch of boom slimes below me, so I tried to feed them for plots, was almost killed, and had to run away as fast as possible, only just escaping with my life. I built up a corral and placed in my slime before deciding to head back to the lava area to get some more. On the way there, I found a bug in the game that gave you infinite energy. It's relatively complicated, so I'll make you a rundown on how to do it on my second channel. P pretty cool. Arriving at the area, I found a cool cave with some baddie slimes, which I picked up. I was then wandering around aimlessly when I found a crystal slime, and after grabbing it, I also noticed a crystal gordo. So I ran home and the next day, returned with my inventory filled with food. After feeding it fully, it still didn't burst, so I went around the island collecting food until it was full. When it exploded, it uncovered something absolutely game-changing. An amazing and crazy game mechanic. A water spurt. Thank you, Slime Rancher. Very cool. I harvested my plots, then stood on a slime for a bit. Yeah, uh -huh. I did that. I then planted my odd onion before deciding to return to the pomegranate area since I had accidentally fed all of mine to the slimes. I dropped down into the cave, then after some searching, eventually found some, which when I got home, I planted in a farm. I then noticed that my odd onion farm had grown carrots, which was certainly <laughs> very odd. <laughs> I ran over to the lava area the next day with the goal of collecting a bunch of the area's specific resources, such as lava dust and oil. I glitch sprinted all around the area, finding spurts of resources everywhere. Everywhere. I also made sure to get rid of any angry slimes because I knew their potential to knock me out. By the end of the day, I had well and truly achieved what I had come for. But I returned the very next day, this time with the goal of uncovering the map. I was looking around when I came across a cave which had a texture of crumbling wall, then abruptly ended. Thank you, Slime Rancher. Very cool. But not long after, I found the map piece, completing 50% of my goal. When I was flying away, I saw a Gordo in the distance, and coming closer, I also found fire slimes in a lava pool near it. I returned home where I grabbed a bunch of chickens, which I fed to the Gordo, revealing a huge cavern inside, unlocking the Ember Valley portal. Happy with this? I left. I needed somewhere for my fire slimes to go on day 51, so I built up a corral and set them down. I then harvested some carrots, walked back, and they were all gone. As sad as I was, I continued on with my goal and headed off to Ember Valley. Soon, I found the place where the last map was held, a massive mountain range. I had a close call flying around the back end, eventually finding the piece and completing my map of the Rainbow Islands. I then flew over to a singular island with a tabby gordo on it, but I didn't have any food, so I went home. On day 52, since my goal of completing the entire map was finished, I wanted to start something huge. Eventually, while brainstorming on the roof, I decided to create a massive zoo, including the basic form of every single slime in the game. This was going to be really cool, but I needed to do some preparation. First, I sold every single plot that I had, which took three days, released all of my slimes into the natural habitats, which took one day, then finally broke all the farms that I no longer needed, which also took one day. So on day 57, I woke up on a clean slate with 140,000 new bucks in my pocket. I set out to get my first five slime types. I collected some day slimes, then waited until night for the ringtails to come out, returned home and deposited them before taking advantage of the night to grab some phosphor slimes as well. The next day, I headed to Ember Valley where I got some tabby, angler and rock slimes, but I was still missing boom, batty and crystal slimes for that area. So I returned the next day. Unfortunately, I couldn't find enough batty slimes because they literally don't spawn 
at all. So once again, I went straight back the next day for the sole purpose of getting batty slimes. I ran around the entire day, but none spawned or were just all eaten by tar until finally I entered a cave and there they all were. I returned home very relieved. Now all I needed was five puddle slimes and five fire slimes. I first headed to the puddle where I found my puddle slimes and now it was time for the hard part. I headed over to Ember Valley and searched. I found three at the very beginning, but for the rest of the entire day, not a single fire slime spawned. But my luck changed the next day and after grabbing all of my fire slimes, I headed home. But there I ran into a problem. I didn't have anywhere to house my slimes. But checking my fabricator, I found a pond just for them. The only problem? I needed fire plots. That's, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. So the next morning, I crafted a teleporter to Ember Valley, found a secluded lava pond, and it dropped in my slimes. Eventually, they started to despawn, so I knew I was doing something wrong. When I returned home, I decided to try the incinerator, and amazingly, it actually worked, giving me the five plots I needed to craft the magma bath, which I did. Dropping two slimes into the magma bath and three into the ashtray, I was finally done with the slimes part of the zoo. Slime section, you ponder. Well, on day 64, I wanted to decorate my zoo. So after having a look in my fabricator, I went out to gather resources. Upon my return, I crafted up a bunch of random decorations, placing it down everywhere. And with that, Slime Rancher Zoo was officially complete. Or was it? With that project done, I could finally move on to some things I wanted to do. So I headed over to Ember Valley where I remembered seeing a massive island with a castle on it. I flew over, killed some tar to protect a small innocent tabby slime that- no, okay. After exploring the island fully, I looked upon the gigantic mountain in the background and wondered if I could climb it. Flying from platform to platform, careful not to fall, I precautiously made it all the way to the top. It was very barren, but a beautiful way to enjoy the view. Heading down to my fabricator, I decided that my next big project would be maxing out my player. I got started by collecting some boom plots and upgrading my boots energy consumption, which on hindsight is sort of useless, seeing as I could run forever anyway. I then set my sights on an energy storage upgrade so I could fly for a longer time. Unfortunately, I didn't have any oil, so I headed over to Ember Valley just to only find lava dust and radiant ore. I was sure this game was against me. But I had better luck on day 67, returning just after midday with 11 oil. I guess I just wasn't looking in the right places. Noticing that I still needed jelly stone and cotton plots, I headed out to collect both of these resources, struggling a little on the jelly stone front. I continued this search the next day, stumbling across stupid amounts of deep brine, but eventually finding the last of the jelly stone I needed, in a really cool circular cave that I had never seen before. Upon my return to the base, I crafted out my energy container, giving me 200 energy in total. I was feeding my slimes the next morning when I realized my flutter slimes were out of food, so I waited until nightfall then went to the area where nectar spawned. I ran around collecting moon dew nectar, wild honey, and beeswax until I got curious about the massive portal right in front of me. Unfortunately, I still couldn't go in, but I presumed it would be important in a following update. When the sun rose, I headed back home and finally fed my slimes. Continuing on my objective to complete the player upgrades, I set my sights on the pulse wave, so I grabbed both materials that I needed and crafted it up. Basically, what this upgrade does is push slimes around, so that's pretty cool. On a different note, I die a lot, and for that reason, and I wanted to get myself the tank guard, which saved some of my resources upon my demise. But I needed crystal plots, and I might have forgotten to feed my slimes. So I threw them a bunch of food and built my upgrade. I then stupidly decided to try it out by leaping off a cliff. <laughs> I mean, it worked, so, you know, that's something. The next day, I decided to feed my flutter slimes again, so I headed over to the area where they spawn and sat there until nightfall. By 5 o'clock, I was expecting all of the flowers to start spawning moon dew. I ran around searching for 7 hours and one single one spawned. All of the other flowers didn't even start the spawn cycle. <laughs> I'm not angry, but my slimes are hungry, that's for sure. G Heading down to the fabricator, I decided that I wanted to craft up a giant chicken, because it's a giant chicken. But I needed some oil, so I headed to Ember Valley. On my way, I got jumped by a huge amount of angry slimes and almost got knocked out. So after grabbing the oil I needed, I decided that I needed to make that area safe. To do this, first I needed something to lure them into one place, then something to calm them down. Heading over, I noticed that they were carnivorous, so the giant chicken would be perfect for luring them. So I crafted it. <sighs> 
So I crafted. I, I, I'm literally. So I crafted the chicken, which wasn't as big as I'd hoped, then set my sights on a taming bell, which would calm all of the angry slimes, making the whole area a whole lot safer. So I craft. I'm, I'm gonna scream, dude. I'm, uh, I collected oil, honey, and plots for the entirety of day 75 and ended the day by finally crafting my taming bell, ready to make Ember Valley safe again. So the next day, I sprinted over. Unfortunately, there wasn't any two spots that were really close together, but I tried my best and placed them down. And when I rung the bell, all the slimes stopped being angry. As much as that was completely what I was expecting, I was really happy nonetheless. Heading back to base, I decided the next step was another tank upgrade. So I ran out, grabbed some resources that I needed, and crafted it up. I then realized I only had two more available upgrades for my character, and for those, I only needed honey and jellystone. And luckily for me, I had played so much of this game by now, I knew exactly exactly where to find them. So I headed over to the portal when I ran into a golden slime, which upon seeing me promptly jumped off a cliff. A little bewildered, I filled my inventory with easily enough of both resources and decided to head home. And making this very precocious jump over a canal, I returned home happily with all of my resources. I mean, at least I kept a little bit of a high right? <laughs> So I obviously set out once again on day 78, off to find jellystone and honey. And surprisingly enough, I was really lucky in finding a bunch of jellystone spawns as well as an area filled with honey that I'd never seen before. With my resources secured, I made my massive jump, returned to base and crafted my health upgrade before collecting some plots and upgrading my boots. I could now run for a really long time. That was a complete one. You know what else is a waste of time? Playing an entire day, then realizing you forgot to record. <laughs> On day 80, I was feeding my slimes when I realized I hadn't fed my flutter slimes in a while. So I ran over and waited until nightfall. Unfortunately, when I took a look, the whole area was filled with tar. But this was the perfect opportunity for me to try out my new water turret. And placing it down... Yep. Uh, that did what it's supposed to do. But on the moonju side of things, they were actually spawning frequently. And I was able to return with a solid 10, which I fed to my slimes. I got a call on day 81, giving me a drone archive key. Curious to what this did, I headed down to craft it. I needed a heap of jelly stones, so I collected it over the next couple of days, threw them in the fabricator, then realized that I needed hunter plots. This is fine, until I realized something devastating. I hadn't got any hunter slimes in my zoo. Incredibly disappointed in myself, I headed over to the area where hunter slimes spawn, threw five of them in a new corral, and placed 20 plots into my fabricator. I then realized that I needed five fire plots. So I grabbed a bunch of useless pink plots and burnt them in the incinerator. When no ash spawned, I realized that it only worked with food. Well, that was a complete waste. Ignoring what had just happened, I grabbed a bunch of food and burnt it all, feeding my fire slimes. I collected up all the plots, threw them in, and crafted my new drone archive key. Now, very interested in the use of this item, I ran up to a drone and clicked X, revealing another small paragraph of lore. This was kind of interesting, so I spent the day running around looking for drones. It got strange at best. On day 85, I decided to make an addition to my zoo and also showcase all the fruit and vegetables in the game. So I built up a bunch of new farm plots and planted them all. I needed to move my chickens, so I sucked them all up and placed them in one coop before realizing that I could also collect all the meat in the game. I ran over to the beach, grabbed a single sea hen, and placed it in a new coop. I'm sure it's very happy. I was loading my game the next morning when I realized I was 77 out of 81 Slimepedia entries. So I entered the game and identified that I needed to find a bunch of chickens, which tied perfectly with my previous goal. So I headed to Ember Valley, calmed a bunch of slimes, and found a Brer Chicken Doo crossing off one of the entries. I also made a new coop for my Brer Chickens to stay. On day 87, I wanted to get a sea hen chick, so I teleported over. Wandering towards the beach, I saw a drone on a giant mushroom that talked about making pizzas? What? So I dropped off a cliff completely on purpose. <laughs> but I was back on the grind the next day, heading over, grabbing some beeswax, and walking to the beach. I found a whole bunch of sea hens and added sea chick to my slimepedia. With a whole bunch of chickens in my inventory ready to start a new life at my farm, I headed through a cave where I found a meat-eating gordo. Unfortunately, all my hens had gone missing, so I ran back to find some and fell in this microscopic hole into the water. At least I kept two of them. <laughs> At this point, I realized the only thing left for me to discover was the stony chick, but I had no idea where to find it. I first headed to the starlight strand, but all I could find were normal chickens. Like, a lot of them. Presuming that if the stony chickens weren't here, they would be in Ember Valley, I headed over before running into a lucky slime, which I had tried to run away from, but it still just despawned. I couldn't find any hens in Ember Valley, 
Valley, but something amazing still happened. I came across another lucky slime, and this time taking full advantage of it, fed it a bunch, making a bit of money. Still didn't find any hens though. But I was determined to change this fact, so I headed over once again, noticed the grass was changing color, and miraculously ran into some stone hens just walking in the area right next to my base. Stupefied, I returned home, placed them in a coop with some rooster roos to, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and eventually got my final Slimepedia entry, the stone chick. But logging out and checking my save file, I was still one off completion. And that was when I realized I was missing the rarest slime in the game, the legendary golden slime. So I knew what I had to do. I grabbed the recipe for the slime stage, crafted one up, grabbed a bunch of food and searched. My plan was kind of vague, but followed the lines of getting the slime onto the stage, then feeding it food. My initial method to finding one was to clear an area, then wait until new slime spawned, but I quickly changed methods to instead load in and out of an area, hoping the slimes would respawn every time. Regardless, I didn't end up finding one. But by day 92, I had changed up my strategy. I would basically just sprint around the entire map looking for slimes, and I planned to do this until the 100 day mark. But something amazing happened. Just the next day, I was wandering around Ember Valley when one popped out in front of me. I panicked a little bit, fed it, and then grabbed the plot. I was ecstatic. With my Slimepedia complete, 100 100,000 new bucks in my pocket before I spent it, and having collected every slime and food ever, in my eyes, I had completed the game. I spent the last days searching for another golden slime to put on my slime stage, but to no avail. Nonetheless, I was so happy one had spawned for me anyways. And those were my 100 days in Slime Ratchet 2. I hope you enjoyed, and again, 10,000 subs is right around the corner, so please subscribe. I'll see you later.